Well, it turns out not even Miko Koivu can save the Minnesota Wild. We talk about Koivu's jersey retirement, the Wild's losses against the Blue Jackets and the Predators, and preview a big week ahead today on Locked on Wild. <laughs> You're Locked On Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen every day, and just as a reminder, Locked on Wild is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. On today's episode of Locked on Wilds, we recap the last few games for the Minnesota Wild, which have seen the same problems persist. We talk about Miko Koivu's jersey retirement ceremony and preview the start of a lengthy homestand for the Minnesota Wild, in which it's going to be time for this team to pick up its performance to get back into the swing of things. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild, your veteran captain of the show, and uh, trying to get things figured out for this Minnesota Wild team in the midst of a lengthy skid. We're joined by our regular Monday co-host, not a Victory Monday, but a Micheletti Monday nonetheless. Alex Micheletti joining us here today. Alex, what's happening? Not too much. Yeah, it was an interesting weekend of hockey, uh, uh, all around uh, college hockey and playoffs and, and wild craziness and high school um, hockey. Um, so yeah, lots, lots of, lots of fun hockey this, this past weekend. Yeah. It's just, it's been, it's been a little bit of a skid to say the least. I think yeah. I uh, crunched the numbers in the wild are now six, 11 and one in the second half of the season. And, you know, it's, it's been the same problems. It's been, you know, some lapses defensively. It's been goaltending, and I think by extension of those two things both not being as great as they were to start the year, um, I think has made both look worse at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I did see a stat from, uh, from Jay Fresh, uh, one of the uh, more forward analytical uh, minds out there on uh, the NHL Twitter sphere. That, uh, that said the Wild are actually second in the league in terms of expected goals against since March, uh, as of March 13th at 2.55 per game. Obviously, the stats are telling one story. Visually, we're getting a completely different story, but at the end of the day, you know, the culprits of this skid, defensive lapses, not as good of goal to, I'll just say uneven goaltending, mm -hmm. disastrous penalty kill, yeah. and a power play that is now starting to give up more shorthanded opportunities to opponents than actual shots by the power play unit. It's, it's very evident right now that this team was hoping that getting back to full strength would, uh, would get everything back on track. Not necessarily the case. No, no. Yeah, it was <laughs> just it's a collectiveness of just, you know, just uh, lapses at the worst times, uh, you know, after, you know, giving up goals like immediately after scoring. It just it just kills all the momentum that you have and and just weird goals. Another weird, weird couple of goals for Capo given up tonight. And uh, it's tough on a, on a banner night, too. You, you know, you have all that energy and. Nashville was playing on a back-to-back -back with uh, David Riddick, uh, Riddick uh, who hadn't played in a long time. Uh, Saros had been been starting them, you know, almost every game uh, for the past month, and so yeah, it was that's a that's a tough one to lose to a divisional opponent right right at home too. Well, and it's it's so frustrating too because the Wild played the uh, the New York Rangers to right. start the week last week, and. It was a Rangers team that was eight, two, and one in their last eleven games. Yeah, so they were playing really well. I know the favorite for the Vesna and for <laughs> potentially the MVP, Igor Shosturkin, was not in net. 
But at the same time, it's still a very dangerous team in the Rangers and the Wild beat them five to two. And so we're like, are we back? Feeling like, good. Are we back on track? And then after that, the little mini road trip, which featured a six to five like fight night win over the Detroit Red Wings, and then a loss to Columbus, and now a loss to Nashville, and it's just back downhill. Yeah, it's, you know, it just you can't make it up, right? Um, you know, no. it's, yeah, we uh, this this homestand hopefully hopefully they can get them back on the right track, but they haven't been playing well at home either. So you know, it's you know uh, this this week is going to definitely be interesting to see what uh, you know because Billy G will be watching and uh, um, you know the trade deadline coming up. I I also thought it was funny as I. I uh, uh, when they were showing all the uh, old wild folks, I saw Chuck Fletcher. I was like, "Oh, oh, maybe, maybe this is the perfect time for him to talk to Billy G about about some trade uh, talks." But that, yeah, it was funny seeing all the um, old uh, wild guys uh, in the in the crowd. And we'll talk about the Koivu yeah. um, ceremony here in just a bit. But yeah, it would be the perfect time for Billy to say, <laughs> "Hey, Chuck, uh, step into my office for right? just a second. Just get a couple." <laughs> things to talk about um okay. i did crunch some numbers and i'm not meaning to like because we're we're taking the theme this week of there need to be some changes and i've seen suggestions that you know dean is struggling with making adjustments and that's a that's a fair criticism um at this point i i think it's premature to suggest that he needs to be replaced but i think we can now get to the point where yes it'd be nice to keep all these line combos together, they got to do something. Cause I'll just, I'll just hit everybody with it right now. The wilds since the all-star break have won 435 face-offs. They've lost 565 of them. So they're winning face-offs at a 43% clip, not terrible, but there are several games in here in which they've been almost doubled up in terms of uh, face-off losses compared to face-off wins. So that's not great. <laughs> the Wild power play is 10 for 47 since the All-Star break. Not terrible, 21%, but again, it seems like the power play is giving up more shorthanded opportunities than they are getting opportunities themselves because of just lackluster turnovers that... Uh, that are being forced in the neutral zone. And so that's that's not great. The big one, the wild penalty kill is 36 for its last 55, which is a 65% penalty kill rate, which if it's not right now, they're rapidly descending to worst in the NHL. I know there's some, I know they got some room to get to that point, but that has been a major concern as well. And it just, it seems like all of this stuff, if it would be happening at once, is fixable. Right. But all four of those things going bad at the same time is a lot to overcome. However, the team needs to do something about it. Yeah. I <laughs> mean, you can't. You can't. You just if you want to. If you want to make uh, a cup run, which you know it's. It seems to be wide open. Uh, you know this this year. Um, there isn't one dominant team um, in in you know completely in the West. Everybody's had their kind of faults. Some um, and uh, so <laughs> there's going to have to be multiple moves made. It's not. I don't think just one move is going to make a huge change to this team. I think it's going to take multiple moves to, uh, you know, to really, you know, you know, make a huge you know difference uh, with the way that they're playing right now. And so yeah. I know Billy G doesn't want to give up picks and prospects, but, you know, um, you might have to, you know, you know, try to try to go all in if you can. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's rapidly approaching the, I think we can stay put and just ride it out. That that has that has passed. Like it is rapidly approaching. We have to do something to get this back on track. And so, what Bill Guerin does, we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on it because you know the uh, the trade deadline's coming up a week from now. So, 
Obviously, there will be some phone calls made, probably to Chuck Fletcher, probably to a couple of other general managers throughout the league. But um, we got plenty of time to talk about that um, over the next week. Uh, we are going to discuss Miko Koivu's jersey retirement ceremony and if we think anybody currently on the Wild roster stands a chance to have the same done to them uh, sometime down the road. We'll talk more with Alex McLeddy next. You're on Locked on Wild. I'm going to be honest. I've never been a huge multivitamin or supplement guy myself because I usually get up a little later than I should. So I'm rushing out the door, barely getting any breakfast in my system, let alone setting out vitamins or supplements. But then I started trying Athletic Greens, and just one scoop of their AG1 gives you 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. Plus, it's lifestyle-friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, Athletic Greens costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Plus, Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. That's all. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wild, again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen every day. Once your first listen of the day is done, make sure that you uh, take a look at what we have for you coming up on March 21st at 2.30 Central Time. You can tune into the Locked On Fantasy Hockey's live deadline reaction show to get all of the on-ice fantasy and betting analysis you need from hosts Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone. Appearances from our roster of local experts. Plus, you can catch our own live show at 2 o'clock Central Time for immediate reaction to the Wilds moves. Yes, that's right. We'll be live after the trade deadline passes to see what the Wild do for the trade deadline. For now, though, Alex, the Wild retired Miko Koivu's number nine, hung it in the rafters. Shortly after, hung an L right next to it uh, by losing to the Nashville Predators. But what did you think of the ceremony, uh, first and foremost, uh, for Koivu um, over the weekend? Yeah, it was emotional for sure. Uh, you know, when he when he started talking about his uh, uh, about his children, um, that was that was pretty emotional and uh, um, really cool, uh, touching moment um, with him. Uh, you know, thanking his parents and. Uh, and his brother Saku too, looking up to him as a um, as a younger brother. I thought that was pretty cool, and uh, you know, um, you know, wishing that Pavel, Dimitra, and 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 Bugar, Boogie were yeah. were still with with uh, with them and with everybody, and uh, how he um, you know how he missed uh, being with the guys and, and the pregame meals and just being in the locker room with with everybody. Um, yeah, so that was it was a touching tribute there. Um, also. Funny moment uh, with the uh, with the golf clubs. I think I thought I heard the the mics say uh, um, microphone pick up Marcus Foligno telling uh, uh, Miko that uh, the clubs weren't going to fix his slice. So that was pretty funny. Um, and what well, he got a Rolex too. So I mean, yeah, you know, they uh, the organization really uh, really hooked him up. And I mean, how could you not with uh, uh, with the effort that Miko put in uh, to his career with the Wild and being the all time point. Uh, um, get her. Um, yeah, it was a heck of a heck of a run for for Miko, and uh, of course, uh, you know, it just brings back all the all the old memories of him. You know, the backhand goals on shootouts and in the playoff runs. Uh, yeah, so he's uh, he's definitely missed for sure. Yeah, and you know, it, it just it, it was it was a way to 
um, honor the guy who I think is most synonymous with that era in wild hockey. Obviously, you know, kind of turning the page and uh, and shifting focus a little bit to a different brand of hockey. But you know, if you're if you're going to pick one player to represent what the franchise was at that point in its existence, he is the perfect fit. I know that's that the Jersey retirement in and of itself is kind of a polarizing topic, depending on who you talk to um, on wild social media. But if the wild were going to do something to commemorate that era in their franchise's history, it's Miko, no doubt. So, right. <laughs> you know, whether or not he deserved to have his number retired, you know, is certainly a topic for debate, but um, at the end of the day, they they did that to kind of you know honor the the time from when they came into the league to where they're at now. And if you're looking for a guy to do that, it's it's Miko Koivu hands down. Right. No. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's, <laughs> um, he was uh, as classy as they come for sure. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, you know, it's amazing. He uh, the <laughs> the amount of hate that he got uh, you know <laughs> throughout his 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 wild career was. Just insane. Um, you yeah. know, the guy, uh, the guy was there. Um, you know, one of the best two-way centers uh, um, around this. You know, this past you know decade. Um, so um, I'm I'm glad I'm glad he got this honor, and uh, um, it's definitely deserved, no matter what you know, the haters say. Yeah, he he very much is looked at the same way that Joe Mauer's looked at with the Twins, and I made that comparison in the past. Um, not going to really dive into that any further, but you know, it it is interesting because while his Jersey was the first, it certainly will not be the last. And I think there are a couple of players on the wild roster currently that might get to the point of having their jerseys put up in the rafters too. You'd assume that Kirill Kaprizov's 97 is being hung up next to multiple Stanley cup trophy Uh, banners and you know all sorts of accolades but Kaprizov Matt Boldy any any other names that uh, that could potentially um, get to that point depending on how the rest of their career pans out I can think of a couple yeah uh yeah, um, Jonas Brodin, uh, uh, maybe, uh, it's not the points, but, uh, you know, just everything that he does, um, you know, it's, uh, he's a heck of a player, Spurgeon, um, you know, those, those two come to mind for sure. Rem Pitlick, uh, <laughs> who scored again, by the way, he's got 13 goals in the season. Yeah, that one, that move never really made any sense to me. Um, you definitely could have, um, made some, you know, other moves to, you know, to protect him. Uh, you know, he's a, he, he's a heck of a player. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't think he, um, towards the end there, I don't think he got along with the coaching staff. So maybe that's why yeah. they just, um, you know, that's why they just said hit the road. Um, so, uh, but good for, good for him for taking this, you know, his opportunity there. And, you know, um, you know, if, you know, if this stretch continues, it can stay there for, for quite a bit and maybe get, you know, get an extended contract. So, yeah. um, unless I want to see all the pit looks all together at one point, uh, <laughs> it's like Pokemon got to catch them all. They caught all the pit looks. So, you know, they got, uh, they got red at the U and Tyler's going to be, once he's healthy, he's, he'll be joining Rem. And so yeah. it'd be hilarious to see all three. Collecting all of the uh, infinity stones. Yes. And, nice. and all the Pokemon, all the Pitlicks. Um, you know who else scored again? Matt Boldy. Yes. So, from the Rockstar Zone. From, yeah, right, uh, uh, right as uh, Danny Heatley, uh, All-Star, would say. So The guy who technically replaced him in the lineup. So, yeah, I, it, I'd, say it, I'd say it worked out pretty good. Hey, I mean, uh, we've, we've, uh, we've talked about this in the past, too, but, uh, you know, if the Wild don't have a bad uh, Winter Classic, we might not even see Matt Boldy, you know? That was the... <laughs> That was the you know the panic move to to get them up and uh, so yeah, kind of just you know thank you St. Louis Blues for for introducing us to Matt Boldy. <laughs> yeah, now and now you may be looking in the off season. I mean, if I'm putting my GM cap on, I may center my core for this team around Kaprizov, Fiala, and Boldy. Yeah, no, no doubt. 
Yeah, no doubt. Um, we've talked about this too. They got to keep uh, Fiala um, because yeah. those two together, you know, it's just, <laughs> um, you know, Fiala's never had a line mate like Boldy and they, the chemistry uh, between those two is, you know, it's getting, it's getting there with, uh, you know, Caprisa and Zuccarello uh, levels. Um, yeah. So Kevin, I mean, Kevin has hit his career high. He's tied his career high in points. I do believe. Um, so yeah. Thank you, Matt Boldy for the help there. <laughs> right. No kidding. Oh man. Uh, did they, uh, they wouldn't even be where they are right now if they didn't have that second scoring no. line. So, no, um, no chance. Yeah, um, because they were relying on the top line way too much. It'd be that. it'd be something like two, fourteen and one or something like that. Because there have been a few games that that line has won single handedly. Right. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Yeah, and Makes or sense. or have started the comebacks too. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll. Um, I mean, that's that's going to be a huge talking point in the off season. Um, selfishly, I would love to see it tried at least once with Kaprizov, Boldy, and Fiala all in the same line. Right. I don't know if it would work. That might be too much awesome in one combination, but <laughs> I can dream, can I? Um, yes, 100%. We've got a big home stands that just started with the loss to Nashville. And so uh, we'll take a look ahead, just a couple of games here this week. So we'll uh, we'll take a look ahead at the next two opponents for your Minnesota Wild as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. It's that time of year again as college's NCAA tournament is finally upon us. And for everything you need to make sure that your bracket is perfect from all the latest odds, Contests and player props. Bet online is the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. Bet online remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. Bet online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. So head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. You can find all of it at Bet Online, where the game starts. It is the month of March, and if you are continuing with your eating plans of eating better and looking better, Built Bar is here to help. If you're looking to shake up your Built Bar routine, puffs are the way to go. If you haven't tried them, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Just like all other Built Bars, they contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. So head to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15. To get 15% off of your order. Again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Seth Topol and Alex McLeddy looking ahead now to the rest of this week. And just two games on the schedule for the Wild this week. So they get until Wednesday before taking on the Boston Bruins, and then a Saturday matinee against the Chicago Blackhawks. First off, let's look at the Boston Bruins, and Boston has been up. They've been down. Looks like they're back up again. Um, A dangerous Bruins team that is uh, trying to stay close to Florida and Tampa Bay in the Atlantic Division. What concerns you about the matchup against Boston how do the Wilds stack up against the mighty Bruins that the Wild actually fun fact beats in Matt Boldy's debut in the NHL yeah I'm, I'm extremely nervous because they're playing a lot better now um and their power play can be lethal um yes. you know they they stack their top power play so they put pasta they put Marchand they put Bergeron um, and McAvoy all together, um, and, and Taylor Hall. 
Um, so that just um, uh, that that is that <laughs> that leads to you know uh, disastrous things uh, if the wild or have to go on the penalty kill the way the penalty kill has been. Um, um, so if they can avoid that, you know, uh, that would be nice. Um, you know, now they're starting to get some depth scoring, which is scary too. Craig Smith had a couple goals against Arizona the other night. And I think Charlie Coyle got the game winner. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> and Eric Hall is playing really well. He's, uh, you know, he's been playing with, uh, with Marsh and, and, uh, in Bergeron. So, um, that's, that's always, uh, interesting. Um, but uh, you know they beat them the last time in in Boston, so you know maybe we'll I mean we'll see the their goalie's young Swayman. He's he's really really he's a really talented goalie, but uh, they've been able to figure him out. And maybe uh, maybe we, we see a little rough stuff too with uh, with how uh, you know Kaprizov got uh, you know from uh, Trent Frederick. Uh, oh, I, I would <laughs> I would expect uh, Marcus to to get in the mix uh, with uh, with the good old Trent for sure. Well, and the, the funny thing is that people were pointing that out, and rightfully so. They were pointing out that uh, post-suspension, Felino was a little bit more quiet um, in those those few games. Not against after. Columbus. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, the last couple of games, he absolutely has not been. <laughs> he fought in the game against the Predators, and uh, he did several other things in the game <laughs> against the, uh, the Blue Jackets. So... Yeah, if there is going to be any sort of a response, you know, we've been talking about the 16th being circled on the calendar for months. <laughs> we could see it. Oh, and fun fact, the Bruins are 8-1-1 one, and one in their last 10 games. Good, great, grand, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be challenging. And uh, uh, the Blackhawks, even though their record is bad, uh, they've been scoring a ton of goals. I mean, they... Yeah. Uh, they just beat Ottawa six to three. <laughs> um, yeah, so just you know, they anytime you still have Patrick Kane, Alex Tabrinkat, you know, Jonathan Taves, Seth Jones, um, you know, those are some big, big time names that have uh, have equity in this league and that can can score. And so, um, yeah, that's it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting two week two game week for sure. Well, yeah, and, you know, the, the games against Chicago this year, uh, if I recall correctly, two of them were were grinders um, early in the season. Um, well, one of the two in that early stretch was a grinder, 4-3 uh, in overtime. But then the, uh, the game before the uh, – the game to finish off the first half of the season in which the wild beats Chicago five to nothing and just flattened them. Yeah. Those are good times. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Doesn't that seem so long ago too? Like it's he's reminiscing seems, about the outdoor game too. It seems like ages ago. <laughs> it seems like an entirely different season. Right. And like the wild were 28, 10 and I think three heading into the all-star break. And so things have uh, things have not gone well since. But you know that that's the that's the crazy thing about this is that this stretch is pretty much the same roster with the addition of Matt Boldy in the mix. And so something has something has clearly changed. And you know whether it's like we have kind of alluded to whether it's the need to tweak some things on the special teams for sure, but, uh, but on defense as well. Um, it's just, it's too talented of a team to just kind of turtle up like they have. And so hopefully, hopefully they can find something that can jog the penalty kill like let's in terms of in terms of the the hierarchy of things to fix penalty kills number 1 get that sorted out and if you need to like if you need i, I think the easiest thing to do is to swap like to change up those penalty kill units a little bit just some tweaks some subtle tweaks see if it works it can't be any worse than it is <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's unbelievable now, you know. It, and it, um, you know, it changes 
uh, daily for me of like what they need. You know, uh, at some points you say uh, we need another goalie. Um, hey, look at Toronto. <laughs> uh, Toronto gave them five today <laughs> to, to to Buffalo at the outdoor game, and they Mrazek let in some just howlers. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. So, um, and and then you look at the defense too, and some of the goals that they allowed or caused to 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 happen. It's like, man, we could use a Jacob Chikrin, <laughs> you know, just uh, get a get a you know a big time stud in to to help. Um, because you know, I haven't been impressed with a guy like Alex Goligoski. It just no. he just seems tired or just I don't know. It's just not not his play isn't has hasn't been as good as it was at the beginning of the year. And I think that that's a huge deal too, um, as far as he was the guy that was supposed to replace Ryan Suter. And so Yeah. <laughs> I think I and I think people are right. I, you know, I've had it pointed out a lot, you know, in comments here on YouTube or just on Twitter as well, is that defensively this team needs a little more like oomph a little more like to be able to throw size around and get people (laughs) out of the front of the net you know that that's been a problem in that there just is too much traffic in front you know rebounds have been a big problem as well if capo and talbot control that first shot you don't give up a rebound that leads to a second or third opportunity that usually leads to a goal. And it's just, it's a perfect storm of just hideousness Right is, is about the best way that I can put it. And just these, you know, these four areas that have just mothballed all at once. And so all like, all they can do is just start to try to fix them. Like, right. One at a time, you're not going to fix all of them at once. No. Start with the penalty kill. Get that figured out. Go to the defense. Go to the goaltending. Just try to prop some things up so that we can uh, get this thing back on track because, you know, as, as much fun as we have celebrating wins and talking about, you know, how good things are going and, hey, Kirill Kaprizov is just continuing to be insane this season or Kevin Fiala is having a career year. All these guys having careers. That's a lot of fun. A six, 11 and one stretch is not right. Especially when you go two and eight in a 10 game stretch, it's not fun. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> oh man. There's yeah. It's um, the roller coaster continues with, with this squad. And uh, you know, that's why this, this time of year, it's always the best, you know, because um, you see who actually are the pretenders and who are the contenders, you know, um, yeah. and uh, see what GMs actually want to, you know, go all in um, or, or not or or sell off the entire farm. So, um, yeah, it's going to uh, – it looks like it'll probably be an arms race. Uh, you know, we'll see see if, uh, if Colorado really goes all in, you know, um, getting, a, you know, a Claude Giroux or, you know, <laughs> just, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, or, you know, a uh, team like, um, let's say the Kings, you know, they could try to try to get Jacob Chikorin, you know, um, try to get in that Pacific or Edmonton. Uh, that's, Louis. that's, a, that's a team that, uh, you know, you have two of the best players in the, in the world. Now, are you going to try to um, make a run or not? So well, um, if Ken, yeah. if Ken Holland doesn't, I don't know what's going to happen there. Right. Yeah. You can't, you can't just, continue to waste that that amount of talent it's uh yeah. it's crazy it's it's gone from the state of hockey to the state of sloppy yes <laughs> yep yeah I, yep. I can't believe i just thought of that but what, a, what an acronym but uh yeah. there uh billy g uh i wouldn't want anybody else other than him in this position to to write the ship um every move that he's made so far has been fantastic and yep. uh you know, he made some hard, tough moves at the beginning of the year, and he might have to do it again here. Yeah, it's it's something that he will get fixed. There will probably be some tough choices to be made, but I'm hoping that what we've seen from this team here uh, over the last couple of weeks is that a particular line combination should not be broken up. <laughs> so let's... Uh, Let's pivot that core to a little bit more offense oriented and shuffle some other parts and see how it goes. I uh, totally agree. hundred percent. 
That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Wilds. Rest of the week, we will attempt to figure out ways to uh, fix some of these problem areas for the Minnesota Wilds. So look for full episodes trying to diagnose the power play, the penalty kill, the defense, the goaltending, what everything that is going wrong for this team. We'll try to fix it as we uh, as we do each and every day. So keep an eye out for those. Now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure that you swing over to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Hosts Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone help you become the expert of your fantasy league. Locked On Fantasy Hockey is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Just like Locked On Wild, free and available wherever you listen. So make sure to give us a follow and hop along for the ride. Uh, buckle up, I guess, um, <laughs> as this uh, season continues. Uh, we will continue to keep you up to date on all things Minnesota Wild. Locked On Madness on our Twitter account at Locked On Wild resumes tomorrow. So make sure to tune in for that. Make sure to tune in for our bonus episode, recapping the round of 32 and setting up the rest of the matchups from there. Uh, so check that out as well. As much as we can do to keep you up to date on all things Minnesota Wild, so that if big news, a trade, or a puck drops anywhere in the state of hockey, Lockdown Wild has you covered with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.